I hope you're ready. <laughs> this is Narc Abuse TV Network Free TV. Narcissism, relationships, and a whole lot more. So, let's get this thing going. Today, we have Annie with us. And a special guest is going to be here today. You will see who that is in just a moment. Um, I hope everybody's getting ready. I see people coming in. We're going to go ahead and get Annie in, even though a number of you have told me today, make sure I start late so because you have so many things happening. You can watch this back later. We're going to get started. Let's get Annie in and uh, let's have some fun. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. That dog does it to me. That is the cutest dog. I miss having pets. Yeah. Um he knows. Yeah, he know he knows. Basil. Uh well actually you go ahead. Introduce uh our special guest with you there today. Well, our special guest is definitely Basil Casina. Um he's a little bit narcissistic, but on him it looks good. He's a lovely little shih tzu. And he has taught me a lot of stuff about life, like how oh. to accept what is. Okay, how to accept what is. Yeah. Okay, so now I have to ask, will you please tell everyone, if you can please, I saw something, and I don't know how I missed it until I saw it this morning, about a half hour ago, and I could not stop laughing to myself. It's a video of our special guest mm -hmm. and a box. And a, yes. Okay, uh, everybody, if you if you don't know, please <laughs> subscribe to her channel, her YouTube channel. Please take a look at that video. It is the cutest thing. Please yes. tell everyone about this video that I'm talking about right now. Well, that was when Basil was a puppy, and he was a very <laughs> naughty little puppy, and he was constantly stretching my capacity for communication because he doesn't speak English. And yes. on that particular day, he was playing with the box. And the punchline of this thing is it was called Basil Thinks Inside the Box, which was unusual for him. But it was yeah. pretty cute. It, it was that he, well, you have to watch the video. I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> you have to watch the video. It's the cutest thing. It, it, uh, I don't know how, it, you should repost it as much as you can, because it is the cutest Thank thing. You. Absolutely yeah, I cute. I saw that. I just started laughing. I went like, You've got a, that, what was that? That was, was it seven, eight years ago? I don't even remember what Longer, I saw. Actually. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, thank you, uh, uh, Basil, for being here. Uh, you may not have much to say, but you've taught uh, Annie something we all can learn. He stretched your capacity to communicate. I like that. Yes. Well, oh. as you can see, he's refusing to speak English or communicate with you. He's just <laughs> here and it's a sort of love me or not thing. Yes, it's look at me, love me, and, you know, it's yes. the best thing we could do is to love the dog back. Yes. Um, I was going to ask you this. Um, often you are, well, asked to be on shows and, and a number of other things. People want advice from you. Mm. But when you got started, what was your main focus when you got started making videos and helping individuals? Were you focusing on relationships, narcissism. How was it for you when you got started? When I started, it was really emotional abuse because that was a long, long time ago. That was nearly 20 years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, or it certainly felt like, a lone voice in the wilderness. Um, I was a survivor of domestic abuse and there was very little out there and it was very uncomfortable talking about it. Most people were like, I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, you know, it was abuse was a private matter and it happened to stupid people. So it right. felt like um, I was doing an uphill job. And I had a coach at the time who was very big on um, the internet 
And she said, do a Google search, Annie, do a Google search, see whether there's even a market for this. And she said, yeah. hate to tell you, Annie, I've done a search and there isn't. Yeah. There wasn't at that time. Yeah, I, I noticed a video that you did. I guess it's a little conference kind of a thing where you were talking mm. to a room full of women. Mm. And just watching their body language as you freely were trying to open them up and discuss this, mm. they seemed with their body language, they had an issue with it. Yeah. But as it went on, you, I could literally see people connecting with what you said. It was indeed hidden abuse that yes. they didn't want to talk about. Yes. But, um, but you brought it out. You brought it out. Yeah. What has, what's been some of the effects that you've noticed from those who are willing to finally pull the veil back and start to discuss it more? Well, it's been really liberating because they have had to silence a part of themselves. I'm just trying to see if I can get Basil onto my lap, which would make <laughs> okay. life easier. Can we see him? There we go. There yeah. we go. But we can't actually see him as well. Would uh, you want half him... of my head and all of his? <laughs> I want whatever you're doing is perfect because everybody that's uh, looking at it right now is loving you right now on the screen. I can see it <laughs> off to the side. I can see from the very beginning when we started till now, and everyone's loving it. Matter of fact, Anne underscore Crosby underscore one of our, our, yes. our favorite followers here and loyal says, my favorite breed. So she's letting you know. She, she's glad that uh, Basil is here. <laughs> So the more he's in the frame and I'm not, the better it goes. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I, I could kind of lean that way, but no offense. Well, <laughs> the special guest is stealing the limelight. This is a hoot. For as long as he'll <laughs> stay, I'm happy to do it this way. Okay. That, hey, just that's fine. I'm, I'm, you just keep talking because yes. everyone's going to get to find out that this emotional abuse is something that's often swept under the rug in many people's lives but you've given them a door that's open that they can, they can walk through. Yeah. Well, it was so necessary. I have to say I'm really impressed that you've done your research going to YouTube. Um, but, yeah, I was outraged that people could have been through so much and not be able to vo give voice to it, that we actually had to carry the shame of something that we hadn't done you know we had been at the receiving end of it but we yeah. hadn't done it and you know to have to be silenced for other people's comfort just wasn't on and 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 also many who are on the receiving end of it find themselves truly feeling if not literally alone yeah because if they speak of it they're told maybe in many cases just to get over it that's right. And I think the other thing which is only just starting now, thanks to, you know, social media to a point which makes it so much more accessible, is the understanding that you do not heal from emotional abuse and narcissistic abuse the way you do from other healing trauma. And oh. that a lot of professionals who are working with this problem don't understand how to work with it, which is pretty worrying. But, you know, people can go to uh, therapists, coaches, consultants, mm -hmm. uh, so counsellors, and they are told to get over it, told that it's not that big of a problem, told yes. that they should just try and get on with a partner and, you know, be a, be a little bit more loving. All sorts of rubbish that really doesn't help. Um, I was working with a client this week who has a very dangerous husband who keeps guns in the house and wow. she left him and her lawyer told her she should go back and work it out with him amicably with a house full of guns. You know, it's, it's almost as if no one's being compassionate to listen to what's actually going on for some of these individuals. That's why this show for me personally, Annie, is important because I've had a number of people reach out to me and wanted to have a show like this mm. with someone who talked about emotional abuse, mm. not just for, for women, but also for men. Mm. And I noticed you do both. You're able to, to talk about it across the board. Uh, but 
they've also been people who've gone to therapists, yeah. psychotherapists, and, and professionals, as you're talking about, and walked away feeling empty. Yeah. Walked away feeling lost. Yeah. And e even even through their own uh, spiritual counselors have found out that they still felt empty because they weren't giving them uh, the the proper direction uh, so that they could work on uh, well either resolving the matter or at least uh, healing or working toward getting better. Mm. What have you recognized as some steps a person can do to help them deal and maneuver around emotional abuse and start to get better? I think the very first thing is that you have to own that it happened to you. And then you really have to start having compassion for yourself. And I know compassion is a buzzword now, which it wasn't self-compassion, but people are really rubbishy at it. Um, we all have these shoulds, you know, I should be able to do this. I should be able to do that. I was working with a client this morning. She said, I should have been able to protect myself. I should have been able to do this. And I said to her, okay, let's just reframe this. If you said, I could have been able to do this. I could have been able to protect myself. I could have stood up for myself. Is that true? And she looked at me, she said, no, I absolutely could not because, wow. thank you, Basil, I'm afraid we've reached the limits of his attention span. Yes. So oh, I'll by the way, up. just for, for, for Basil and his uh, ability to, to stick with us for that long as a special guest, Basil gets this. He's come he gets, back for he gets, that. He, gets, he, gets, he come back for that. Okay. Uh, you were saying, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were saying. <laughs> yeah. He heard that. Yes. Um, oh. Basil, oh. excuse me, I'll just give him his toys. No worries, no worries, no worries. Uh, by the way, uh, so everyone will know, uh, we're going to spend as much time as we can today with Annie uh, and Basil uh, until she has to go. I, I know a number of you have wrote me and said a number of things because you knew she was coming on. Uh, I will do my best to pass on. Uh, not only your love for her, which I have those comments off to the side here. I'll give you that before we end the day, uh, Annie, what people have wrote me and told me what, how much they love you and the work that you're doing. But also to some of you who wrote me uh, with a certain topics that you wanted me to touch on, uh, some of those we'll get to. But uh, I'm going to be greedy today. Annie is with me, so I'm going to do as much as I can to cover some things that we talked about in the mm -hmm. show prep that I really want to get to. So everybody be patient with that. Annie, uh, we were kind of talking about a few things there go yeah. right ahead right so i just lost my concentration a little bit with basil that's okay just that's then. okay we, we were talking we were talking about uh how when it comes to mm -hmm. emotional abuse some steps that individuals can make yeah uh, everyone across the screen there's so much happening across the screen i'm not ignoring everybody there mm -hmm. uh, and everybody that's coming in i thank you for being here on narc abuse mm -hmm. tv network but annie and i were just discussing emotional abuse and sometimes the therapist and other professionals seem detached in being able to help an individual navigate through that. Yeah. Um, you were mentioning a step that maybe a person can do uh, yeah. for themselves. I was talking about being very aware of when you should yourself. And we say, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have known better. I should have responded to the red flags. I should have, should have, should have, should have. And <clears throat> pardon me. People don't because they can't. You miss the red flags. Actually, we all see the red flags, but we go and go for the man or the partner because we are so hungry for love. And this person has managed to position themselves as the only person who can give us that. Someone was telling me yesterday that she met a man on a date and first date and he said to her what do you want from a relationship and that is the kind of question that you should be very wary of because he's actually saying or he could have been saying who do you want me to be please tell me i, I thought the same thing yes. as soon as you said it i thought yes. the same thing 
And yes. I will pretend that I am and I will love bomb you because yes. I sense that you're hungry and I will give you the best meal of your life now. Yes. But you'll never damn well get it again. Yes. Um, you, you don't expect it again because now that you've told me, now that yes. you showed me where the wounds are, yes. now that you've opened up the gates, let me tell you how this is going to go. Exactly. But he doesn't really maybe come out and say that. But as a guy, I'm saying that as a man, yes. believe me, as I would tell my daughters who are single, I, listen, if he asked you that question, you should run. Exactly. What you expect, because he should be willing to give what is expected Yeah. as a mature man. He shouldn't need to ask what you're looking for. Precisely. He'll just, yeah, he should be able to know. Uh, but if and you're I'm, hungry enough, it sounds like the best offer you'll ever get. And that's why you can't run when you see the red flags. So I oh, think because, compassion Wait, you can't run. I just have to say, uh, make sure I understood you. So a person, let's say me, I can't run because I'm too hungry for the love. Yeah. To pay attention. Okay, I if get it. If you don't know what the price is going to be, and you've been for years and years or your whole life without getting the love and the validation you want, mm -hmm. someone offers you this thing, or it sounds like they're offering you this thing, and they have a few flaws, but you just reckon, okay, I'll earn them out later because this one's got a great heart, and he's offering mm -hmm. me everything, and, you know, this is the last chance saloon. And I am just so hungry. I need someone to believe in because I don't believe in myself. That's the other part of it. Right. So when someone says, for example, I'm looking, I'm going to start uh, choosing some things from the screen. Everyone's writing you here. Uh, for example, uh, 2713 Bernice. Bernice says, how to get rid of guilt feelings? Uh, because of all the manipulation my ex managed to make me feel, uh, things were her fault. Um, yeah. What's your thought? And I see that because I gave him stress, he now has cancer. Because yeah. he has cancer, he's actually blaming you for it more to the point. But mm -hmm. I think people get so used to accepting that it's their job to make the relationship work. Um, and a narcissist will always tell you it's your job to make the relationship work. Not quite in those words, but everything that goes wrong is your fault. So you have been programmed to work very hard for love, to accept the guilt. And there's a whole process of revisiting your past and learning who you are and accepting that you did the best job you possibly could. And you have to take constant reality checks. Mm -hmm. Literally, for a while, you have to go, um, right, he accused me of giving him cancer because he was stressed. Is that true? Well, actually, he was stressed because he was engineering allegedly, because he was engineering so much conflict in the relationship. Absolutely. And then he's blaming me for it. And where does it say in the medical textbooks that stress <laughs> gives a person cancer? Where, where in the medical textbook is your picture, Bernice? It's not there. It, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't say Bernice causes cancer. Uh, yes. So taking on those guilty feelings, Okay, Bernice, you know I love you. You're, you're here regularly on the show, so I'm going to say this. So uh, uh, if, if Bernice is taking on those feelings, if we find ourselves, me, I'm going to use me again. If I'm taking on the feelings when somebody's trying to tell me that I'm the cause of their either physical illness, emotional a dilemma, mental uh, confusion, and I start taking that on, well, not just that person, but just about everybody I meet, I will have this library of guilt. Totally. That will navigate every relationship that I'm in. Yeah. But it's not factual, is what you were just saying. Which another thing I love about your videos, you, you talk about being fact based, especially when we're dealing with a narcissist. Mm. We need to stick to the fact. Yeah. Why, why is it important to stick to the fact when we're dealing with a narcissist? Because the narcissist is the best liar that you will ever meet. <laughs> And okay. what right, they... in the show, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's the truth. No, that's it. That was beautiful. They're the I... best liar we will ever meet. Yes. Okay. And the thing about a good liar 
is they're really impressive. What happens with a narcissist is that they take your hand and they take you into a parallel universe. But they have literally hypnotized you over time to not see reality as it is, but to see reality as they tell you it is. So narcissists will say to you with a straight face, yes, I have been unfaithful, but mm -hmm. you made me do it. Wow. Yeah. And I've had many women say to me, I think I must have made him do it. And this can only happen in a parallel universe, as far as I understand, at least. Yeah, It has to happen somewhere in a world far, far, far away that doesn't exist. Mm. But when they are discarded or they discard the narcissist, then they find out, excuse me, then they find out that it wasn't their fault. Well, they do if they work on themselves, otherwise they can stay with that forever. And one of the things that I hear most commonly is people who have um, split up from their toxic partner, and whether they're 20 or 60, they will tell me that they're broken, that they're old, that they're damaged goods, that it's over for them, and then wow. sort of that they're ugly and they're fat and they're this and they're that and the other. And they believe that this is their truth. And it is the nastiness that the narcissist is spreading. I remember one day when my narcissist took a look at me and things were not going well, but he was obviously a bit short of a way to smash me down. So he looked at me and this was a long time ago, so there's no justification for it. And he said, you know, you're <laughs> beginning to look your age. Ouch. Come yeah. on now. And that was Seriously? just so nasty. That, you know, that is common, though. Yeah. I mean, my daughters and I only been doing this for a year with this show. But the more people I've talked to, mm. almost 300 episodes, it is amazing how much I'm hearing the same thing. Yeah. They find a way to dig yeah. and clip you at the knees to bring you down when Absolutely. you're minding your own business from what I'm hearing. Yeah. Uh, now, on the screen, I just got a segue to those that are here. Uh, one um, person here, um, everybody, first time passing through. Uh, I'm really horrible on uh, reading Instagram names, so feel free to make a fake name. If you feel emotionally safe, you want to use your name uh, so I can uh, put your comments in here. Um, uh, O-L-V-K-E says, uh, I am crying out loud because I feel stupid believing his sweet words and promises. Yeah. She says, I feel so confused right now. And that's another one. People always feel stupid because they didn't know what they didn't know. Now, if, if you weren't very wise about narcissists beforehand, and most of us aren't wise about narcissists mm -hmm beforehand when someone comes along and seems to be the best thing that's ever happened to you it's a bit weird to say oh this feels too good therefore I'm going to step back and watch rather than lean into it right that's exactly what you should do but popular culture tells us that someone's going to come along sweep us off our feet and it's going Absolutely. to be the happily ever after so it's Absolutely. a strange person that says, slow down, boy, we're not doing this like that. So yeah. it wasn't stupid. It was just that she didn't have the information and didn't know where to get it. Yeah, somebody's mentioning here, I, I just ended a horrible relationship with an extreme narcissist. Mm. Uh, 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 happy oh. Yogi says, I I'm going through that right now. Uh, mm. More and more people find themselves not taking a step back, but instead doing what you just mentioned, leaning in. Mm. Matter of fact, I, I love your videos, eight, nine years back. It doesn't matter. I watched just about every single one of them. Oh, and then I put them on speed dial again today before we did the show to refresh, oh, reboot my memory. So um, I know it may feel at certain moments at a disadvantage because I'm going to say things to you. You said almost a decade ago, but here we go. <laughs> so you talked about 
speaking of leaning in or taking a moment to sit still or, or lean back to look at a relationship before someone jumps into it, you talked about the fantasy scenario. I just love this video. Please don't ask me, everybody. Where the, just you subscribe to her, her YouTube and, and you'll watch this great stuff. It's information you provide for women uh, so that they can rebound from emotional abuse or avoid mm -hmm. it. You talked about looking for a rescuer that some mm -hmm. women and men, even though your videos were geared toward women and are yeah. that way, I'm not leaving you men out uh, that follow the show, but you talk about looking for a rescuer, that a woman can do that, and that she starts to yeah. believe in the fantasy scenario that you mm -hmm. mentioned the fantasy is the problem. Yes. Leaning into the fantasy creates that open door for a narcissist to come in. And sometimes that's painful for someone to look at because you talk about, as we did in the show prep, you highlighted that sometimes we have to take responsibility for ignoring those red flags. We do, particularly when we're informed. But if you think about fairy tales which you probably don't because you might not have been brought up with them so much as... I have I have two daughters right yes so, so the amount but wait a minute of... I, I am a senior citizen now so I know fairy tale I wish I was in my 30s but I'm not yes um well <laughs> okay be nice to me. <laughs> um but if you look at traditional fairy tales so many of them are about rescue so many of them about and there was, you know, romantic fiction very much used to be. Men coming in, sweeping women off to a better place. So rescue is a big part of us. And if you've been brought up in a toxic family, which I was, um, you were taught to be helpless, uh, emotionally helpless. You were not meant to be resourceful. You're meant, not meant to save yourself because uh, the family wanted to keep their claws into you. And therefore rescue seemed like your best option. So it really does set women up rather badly. And when you say set up, you mean in the sense that it makes them vulnerable? Yes. To emotional abuse? Yes, you know, if you really believe that this prince is going to come along and sweep you off your feet, and love you forever. Yeah. It's frightening. Um, a decent rescuer, if a decent rescuer were to come along, they mm -hmm. would get you out of the mess and then say, great, now you can work it out from there. And, yeah. you know, I'm not going to try and um, have a love affair with someone who is not ready yeah. because you you're not. Yeah. And another tragedy is when women manage to never be alone. It's really important if you're going to grow up to be an adult to spend a couple of years at least as yes. an adult being doing you before you try to do a relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. correct. There's uh, so much happening on the screen here. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, uh, you're getting some love. And um, uh, AJNLB... And me says, uh, wow, so eye-opening, uh, exactly how I was set up from childhood. Yeah. Um, I believe that's a she. Uh, you guys can correct me or on the way here. Mm -hmm. If your first time here, uh, the show is not about me, so you won't hurt my feelings if you have to correct me or tell me your name. Uh, the show is about Annie. It's about my guest. And uh, so much that's happening on the screen, someone even says this is the story of their life, the yeah. princess, the prince, and living happily forever after. But you also talk about the male Rapunzel being in the tower as a female Rapunzel and letting the hair down and waiting for a rescuer. And then you highlighted, well, what if you flip that around? What if the guy was in the in the tower? Would you want to rescue him? Absolutely not. Why yeah. would you want someone who is not able to look after themselves? I mean, so many of us have been guilty of marrying little boys and trying to raise our own men. <laughs> Way but, to go. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But, you know, no, if you want to go to the trouble of becoming an adult, if you want a child, get a child. If you want a pet, get a pet. But don't try to 
take a, a child and raise it into a partner. No, 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 no. There are boundaries here. There are lines yeah. that should not be crossed. Right. And, and many, many try to do that. They try to be in a position to save someone only to find out that they have, well, woken up the next day with a narcissist. Yeah. Uh, or uh, how you put it, you said is some men want you to be their mommy, you know, and <laughs> yes. I just see that. You guys, I'm telling you, I love her. I love your video. Yes. I just love the way I loved our show prep. I love I just love the way you explain everything because you're speaking the facts. You're speaking the truth. And you're not just doing it because you're out to to push a book or a number of things. You literally want women to have their eyes open to who I'm they sorry. are and what they've been told so they will stop falling into emotional abuse. But you also said this. You just touched on it. You want a partner, not a patient, or not yeah. a problem. Absolutely. Why is that important for a woman to lock in that concept and when she's looking for a mate for the rest of her life? Well, if you want a patient, you can go off and be a nurse or a counselor or whatever. <laughs> caregiver you do yes right. and you know it's just that life works better if you have an equal partner yes i think life presents enough challenges along the way i think we've both lived long enough to know that yes absolutely um so you don't actually find a partner who will weigh you down with their problems and in the interest of full disclosure, I shall just say that I married a man who was a second generation Holocaust survivor. Now, okay. I had come from a toxic home. I was emotionally fragile, but somehow I thought I could make it my mission to save this man from a very toxic background with huge trauma. I, I, I'm guessing you'll be really surprised if I say that it didn't work. I don't think that was going to, yeah. <laughs> the foundation wasn't good. The, that, that wasn't, yeah. He wasn't coming in. Uh, I'm going to put it this way. From what you just said, I'm going to choose some of your words. He didn't come in. As you said, real men make you feel you're on solid ground yes. when they're with you or, in, or, or, in, or when you're in their presence. You feel a woman should feel stable. He evidently didn't provide that for you because you were trying to make him feel stable. Yeah. I mean, he had layers and layers and layers of trauma and he came from a narcissistic family and he was a narcissist. But apart from that, we had a lot to work <laughs> apart with. Apart from that, that little <laughs> bit. Yeah, well, a little bit of leaven messed you up. It, it didn't mess up the whole baking process. Uh, um, <laughs> people are mentioning on the screen uh Someone says here, well, Anne, Anne, who's a part of uh, our regular viewers of the show, says, mm -hmm. I was his his care, his care caregiver, I assume that is. There was nothing wrong with him. Uh, yeah. Everything was, he was right all the time. Yeah, that's standard. And that's where men can often be, and again, I will be using your words throughout the show. Uh, don't expect you, uh, men, real men, don't expect you to be responsible for their mood. I Absolutely. love that statement. Yeah. That needs to be a posting for somebody. That is perfectly said. Why does a woman need to focus on that if she's dealing with a man that's forever blaming you for his bad mood? Well, she was brought up that way most likely. Oh, that it. it was her job to make her parents happy. She never could, but it was still her yeah. job. Right. You know, and a salt mine would have been an easier job than that, actually, working <laughs> in a salt mine. Oh, man. All right. I tell you, I'm going to be smiling this whole time because you come up with some good lines. Uh, I, you need to have a book full of all your lines or hashtag them uh, and let <laughs> them circulate you. because they're, they, make, they make people think. That's one of the things that I have I here. I have, I have a list of things that people say have said about you that follow the show, and I've asked them to give me comments and and that's one of the things they highlighted. You make people think. You don't just say uh, mm -hmm. something that people can just repost. You literally give them uh, almost like a, an instruction book on how to stay emotionally stable. But you speak from experience. 
I do indeed. And it was really important for me to help other people. I mean, I've been told by various marketing coaches that I should not be as generous with information as I am. Yeah. I have a yeah. business, but primarily I have a commitment. Um, and I want people to understand. I want people to be able to make those changes. It's absolutely heinous that emotional, that narcissistic abuse exists, that the exploitation of uh, one partner in the home or children still exists. It's, you know, there are plenty of dreadful things going on in society right now, but it strikes me that that is one of them. And on a, um, on a political level, nobody cares. It just doesn't exist. Well, these same individuals who are supposed to care are either doing it themselves or they are victims of it. They're in one of the two. If they're victims, yeah. uh, they're feeling that they can't speak up in their house. They're not going to speak out in public either. It, it's an amazing, um, amazing thing that took place when we did our show prep for me, because you, you had this question. How do you get into these relationships is one of the things we, you said we could talk about. How does a person get into this type of a situation? What have you recognized in doing this for uh, 20 Ever. years? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it from a... Um... <laughs> Throughout this I didn't millennium. say that. I didn't say that. You said that. <laughs> well, you bring out the, you bring out the best in me. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, well, that's a frightening thought. <laughs> oh, okay, but thank you very much. I kindly accept that from a lovely lady like yourself. But how do how do people walk into these landmines, emotional landmines that blow up in their face? Well, the first thing is that they've got um, a lot of emotional baggage behind them, usually because they've grown up in a family where they were not loved, where they were not taught boundaries and where they were not taught what safety was. So they're very hungry. And then someone comes along who either offers them everything they've ever wanted or doesn't. But the fact is they have set the bar very low. They know that the only way they're going to get the emotional, or they tell themselves that the only way they're ever going to get the emotional square meal that they want is with a partner. They don't know that all relationships are by no means equal. The one they've seen in the home, which was awful, or the ones they've seen, they were probably led to believe was kind of normal. Yeah. Um, and so the bar is incredibly low and someone comes along and they dress reasonably. They show no overt signs of serious mental illness. They brush they, their teeth. They brush their <laughs> teeth. Yes, it's, they don't yeah. spray food when yeah. they eat. Um, they don't expose themselves to you on a first date. And they might even say something funny. And they go, yeah, I can work with that. I can yeah. work with that, especially if they show interest in you. And I've actually spoken with many, many women, often extremely attractive women, because physical yeah. appearance has nothing to do with it. And intellectual achievement and professional achievement has nothing yeah. to do with it. But these women have not felt good about themselves. And someone comes along yep. and they look at him and they think, no, nope, not for me. But instead of him doing the normal thing of going, okay, I respect that, he keeps coming and coming and coming and coming until they go, oh, well, he must love me. And if he loves me, I'd better sort of take this because I'm in the last chance saloon. Yeah, right. So and then, yeah. And, and then there are repercussions for that decision. There are consequences to making that decision. Often the person's not ready for because they saw something at the beginning that made their no, it should have been a firm no, but they end up changing that mm. and turned it into a yes. Mm. And then they get into situations where they're in relationships because, and I'm, I'm taking from the notes of our show prep right now, they get into relationships where they have false 
they started it on false assumptions. Yeah. That was one of the things you said you wanted to, to talk about as well. False assumptions. How, how does that happen? False assumptions. Well, I mean, this one's a killer. The, I think I may have mentioned to you that my favorite instance of this was when my daughter and I were stuck on an airport and she started talking to the most attractive man there who didn't seem to be with a woman. I, I think, I don't know quite how that happened. But anyway, they ended up sitting next to each other on the plane. And by the time they got off, they, she had this really clear um, sense that they knew each other and they shared values and they had a lot in common. How had that happened? Because they'd exchanged their playlists during uh, the flight and they liked the same huh. music and a whole load of assumptions followed on from there. Well, if he likes these bands and these songs, he must share my opinions about da 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 da. And actually he was gross. He started asking her for naked photos after that. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. But, uh, and she was 17, 18 at the time. I wasn't happy with him at all. But, um, but we make assumptions. They show us a little bit about ourselves. They tell us something and we think, oh, yes, that means this, that, and the other. It doesn't. It's a fact. You have a fact and you want to have more facts. Um, if you see a guy who is nice to a child that doesn't mean he actually likes children and he wants children you've got to actually do your due diligence or or, or they're nice to a dog or they're walking a dog that yeah. doesn't mean that it's even their dog precisely <laughs> let alone they love children as you mentioned right now. yes and um i was talking to one person today um about her narcissist who she's uh, showing the door and he wants full he wants as much custody of the children as he can get allegedly mm -hmm. now i doubt whether that's true and but i said to her by the sound of him he is the kind of guy who would like to take his kids out on a weekend and sit in a restaurant so that single <laughs> women can see what a great dad go. he is yeah. bingo absolutely yeah. correct yes that's the way, ladies, please, that's the way guys think when they're not emotionally well. They think yeah. just like that. You're absolutely correct. That's a very good point. Or there's some woman he's interested in that has children, and he yes. wants to give the impression that he's a father type of a person. Yes. Um, you, have, you have a couple of questions. I better get to them. Everybody uh, on the screen, you, you people are awesome. They're having chats with each other, Annie, while we're yeah, talking. I, I appreciate everybody doing that. Uh, but you do have two questions. I'm going to see. I'm going to see what they are here. Uh, let's go with this one. I'm going to read something to you. Wait, wait here. Let's do this. Uh, what are appropriate dating questions from a man? Uh, that comes from um, uh, Betsy. I'm just going to call you that. Uh, if you want to correct me, feel free to tell me your name. Uh, go ahead, Annie. I think it's almost more a cake case sorry a case of what are inappropriate questions when you're on a date like first date what do you really want for a relationship what are you looking for in a man a really great one that happened to a client of mine before she was a client she became a client actually because of it was what do you think about sex after 50 and oh, wow. she re yeah she had a really bad relationship. That's with weird. Him. Yeah. Okay. First of all, that's creepy weird. Yes. But Who sits and even, but for him to even think of that question yes. is like a huge red flag. That's actually, like a that's a red banner more than anything yes. else. He actually said, "Do you think sex still matters in a relationship after 50? <laughs> but all these questions where they're prying for information of that's important to them should not be there you want no. a relationship yeah. you want a dating conversation that's kind yeah. of like social tennis talk about light subjects find yeah. out whether they're a happy person or not that's true whether yeah. they've got yeah. interests you will still find out enough from the way they are and the way they talk but the big questions and tell me about your last relationships where did no. they go wrong no, yeah. Bad, bad. 
Yeah. yeah it, it's different to ask someone, hey, look, so uh, what's what's a happy moment that you had in the past couple of months? What, what is something exciting that happened to you? Yeah. That's different. And people that want to know all the negativity about you right up front in the bad relationships, that, that's, uh, that's not good. You have another question uh, for you here. Hopefully I can pull this up. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, you have a couple. Here we go. Um, from Michael, the potato. Uh, do you have advice on dealing with two narcissistic parents as a teen? Okay, so I'm taking that Michael is a teen, and yeah. he has to deal with two narcissistic parents. Well, so you're I, up, Annie. Well, <laughs> Go ahead. Well, <clears throat> a simple question, not. If you have two more narcissistic parents, Michael, I really feel for you. I think the first thing that you have to really try and hold on to is that all the craziness that is going on in the house and is being thrown at you has nothing to do with you. It's about the way that they operate. You want to try and keep yourself centered. Try and not get into any conflict with them that you can avoid. Be as neutral in all conversations as you possibly can and look forward to the day when you can get the hell out of there. But do not try to persuade them of anything. Do not try to communicate with them effectively. Certainly don't expect them to listen to you. They should, but they never will. And trust the people outside the home who show genuine care from, for you. If people outside the home validate you, believe it. That's, that's, uh, that's some great advice because um, he could end up giving information to them that they'll end up using against him. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to read this to you. This is from Crazy Nicole 9. It says, uh, let's just put this up here like that. Um, mm, yes. I can put my glasses Can you make sense? It? No, we're both. Oh, yeah, make me. I'm going to put on two pairs that for what dating for a guy who turns narcissist and hiding his dual life with his side chick i'm not quite sure what the question is there um yeah we we're kind of lost with you on that one uh if you'd like to tell us uh yeah where you're going side with chick that and dual life no no oh okay uh she's saying that he's leading a double life yes that's, that's a no-no no. okay yeah. If he's reading a double life, you make the choice about which one he should have by exiting his life quick smart. Yeah, he, he can't have both if you're not there. That mm -hmm. way you, you free him up so he doesn't have to think so much. Yes. You just go ahead and say, let me, let me give you a gift. I'll get out of your way. Um, you have another one that just popped up. Uh, uh, Samantha here, she says, is it common for a narc to have anxiety and erectile dysfunction? Um, happily, that's well, not something comes, I get asked a lot, but if he has erectile dysfunction, that is his fault. Sorry, that is his issue to address. Don't make it yours. And when it comes to the anxiety that a narc may have, that truly proves to be their issue to totally. deal with as well. Totally. More importantly is do you have anxiety and are you... Uh, a person who's uh, happy dealing with the narc's anxiety. You can't carry, you can't carry their anxiety for them. Yes. Um, but uh, we got another one here that just popped up uh, again. Uh, if I keep attracting men with narcissist oh. behavior traits, uh, I know this is your wheelhouse. Yes. You want to, you want to tackle that? You already yes. see what it says there. Please, may I have a temper tantrum at this one? I, I absolutely. I had a feeling you were going to go in that direction. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> uh, That's just, my yeah. rumple still, still skin moment. Still skin. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I so deeply resent this thing, this trope that's going around that we attract narcissists. You do not attract narcissists. Narcissists are sharks and they are attracted to whatever is in the waters. Water, yes. Yeah, they go for what doesn't get out of their way fast enough. And the issue is not that you attract narcissists, it's that you don't see them coming terribly well. And even if you do, 
you're the kind of person who doesn't know how to deal them a brutal enough no to get them out of your face. That's okay. the problem. I have to do this, Annie. I have to do this. Thank you for saying that. I, I started this channel with my daughters, and I got on a few times and said that, and people didn't understand. They thought I was being insensitive. And I said, let me tell you, they're sharks. And you just said it again. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you shouldn't even feel bad if you didn't get out of the way fast enough. They were looking to devour mm -hmm. someone or something. Yes. And you just happened to not, as you put it, not be aware enough. Even the analogy of being a shark. If we go to shark-infested waters, we know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But if you go to seemingly calm waters, you're not looking for a shark to be there. No. And, and you and others are like lifeguards that are coming on telling everybody, get out of the water. You know, there's, this is not where you want to be. You need to pay attention to this. And when this is happening, and that's yeah. why I appreciate you so. We appreciate you so. I just had to get that off my chest. You got another one here uh, before we have to take a commercial break, everybody. Um, can you see that? Oh, How do you deal here. with a narcissistic boss and lover? Is that the one? Yes. Um, does that mean that your narcissistic boss is your lover? Because if that's it does... That seems to be what you're saying to us. Uh, uh, that says uh, Darbum. Uh, feel free to explain that uh, question uh, to us. You're dealing with a narcissist boss and lover. Uh, when it comes to that last question there, can we just pull all the female and male narcs on an island? Can we put them all on an island? so they can have each other and leave us alone. <laughs> well, leaving us alone doesn't seem to be what they want to do. Yeah. Yes, right. Um, it's a marvelous idea. I personally would like to uh, rocket them over to planet Zog, but that's not going to happen either. Uh, yeah, you know, but they still may come back looking for Superman, uh, yeah. and he'll bring all the narcs with him. Um, the answer was yes to that question we had. Yes. when she said about a narcissist boss and lover. Um, well, when, wow. you, when you're in that kind of situation, Annie, you're up, because they don't want to hear advice from me. Thank you. Well, I would tell them to go get a job at McDonald's and just be happy. I would say that you actually <laughs> want to get out of that job as gracefully as you can if you do need a reference. If not, just go. Um, yes. There is no mileage in this. This person controls you on two fronts. He's your employer and your lover. You cannot be in that relationship. He's not going to change. He doesn't have a heart of gold sit hidden in some yeah. tiny part of his being. He's just bad news two ways. Yeah, bad news two ways. I love that. Uh, there are a number of things that uh, many of you that are watching may want uh, us to discuss. We do show prep here in which we discuss a number of things uh, ahead of time that my guests want to highlight to the audience. So if we don't talk about it now, no doubt, if Annie is ever available again, uh, she will come back and discuss that. Or you can mm -hmm. find it on Annie's page, which is at Dr. No, 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 no. It's... Wait, no. Oh. oh, sorry, yes, it's, that's my Instagram Ooh. page. Sorry, yes, Ooh. at Dr. Yeah, right. Uh, actually, at Dr. Dot underscore Annie PhD is the Instagram page. <laughs> However, do you have a course or something going on right now, too? I didn't double check with you right before we went on. Um, I haven't. What's coming next month is I'm going to be actually opening my Reawakenings Inner Circle, which is going to be a group thing so that you can come in and get hold of all my materials and have live classes and talk about all aspects of healing. That can be found on your website? Or not yet. It's not, not up. No, I mean, I mean, when it's coming up, but yes. they will need to go there. For yes. That. And, okay. and it will be all over Instagram, too. Okay. Got it. Got it. Everybody's mm -hmm. telling you thank you very much. As you can see there, we have gone a total of 55 minutes in talking. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like we've only been talking for about 15. Uh, it went fast. I appreciate you uh, starting the show off with uh, our special guest. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really awesome. When we come back, uh, I'm taking from, again, our show notes. You mentioned concerning boundaries. I want us to be able to yes. talk about boundaries when we come back. And also the power of questions oh, uh, yes. when we come back. But I got to, you know, you got so much happening. Uh, everyone's loving you being here. 
but there seems to be four questions that popped in just when I said we're going to take a break. Mm -hmm. Can we take about five minutes here, Annie? Sure. Is that okay? Because I, yes. I, I don't know if somebody can be able to get all their questions in. Uh, mm -hmm. So here we go. Uh, first one, uh, he goes no contact with me for months. If I happen to message him, um, do you see the rest of it there? Yeah. He talks, he re instantly messages back and talks as if nothing's happened. Um, so can I even ask you, what is the point of this person? What is the point of having a relationship with this person? Um, I love you, Annie. I just love the way you talk. I love the way you, what's the, what's the point? That's a very good question. If yeah. you feel, if you'd like to answer Annie back on that, feel free to do so. What's the point? I'm going to see what else we got here. Uh, Annie, you mentioned that one. Let's go to this one. Uh, how do I know if I am being gaslit or if I just have trust issues and abandonment? From childhood abuse. Well, I think that's really interesting. It sounds like you're likely being gaslit because if you have trust and abandonment issues from childhood and you are with a caring partner, that partner will deal sensitively with your feelings and will try to make sure that you feel safe and loved. If you're with a toxic person, they will play your feelings and um, make you uncomfortable and then say, God, you've just got trust issues. You've just got abandonment issues. This is nothing to do with me. Work yourself, you know, work on it yourself. Yes, right. So it's a very different attitude. And if a sensitive partner reckons that you do have issues, it's within their rights to say you need to work on them. But they wouldn't humiliate you for that. So it's a big difference. Yeah, actually on the screen there, Carolina uh, mentions she's agreeing with you. Yeah. They use your trust issues against you. Yeah. That's, that's huge. No, no. Yeah. Uh, that should definitely make you feel uncomfortable and make you want to mm -hmm. run. Um, I have to tell you something also that's there as I scroll back. Uh, be yourself, nobody's perfect, says, I've been there too, uh, ma'am, is what they're saying to you. I wish I met you before she met the narc, is what mm -hmm. they're saying. Um, um, Casey Wilt says, I'm trying to separate from my narc husband. He thinks it's just a rough patch and disagrees to get a divorce. How do I get out? Well, your narc husband at this point doesn't want to divorce you because it's inconvenient for him. That's the reason why it's a rough patch. I've never so, looked at it that way. Yeah. It's inconvenient for him. Yes. Yes. Well, I mean, it's either going to mean that he's not got his shirt signed or he's going to have to pay child support or something. Right. But there's a very good reason why he doesn't want you to do it. And it's not love because they don't love um, you have to stick by your guns and you're going to have to go through whatever process it takes to get out. In an ideal world, you would be able to move out or get him to move out. But you have to work with whatever is available and literally start the process. Get lawyers involved. You can't talk about it with him. He has to understand that you are playing hardball. If it gets violent, you have to go to the police. You have to really play hardball. But without knowing more, it's hard to give more advice. Um, Art for Annie uh, and Anastasia, uh, one of our our followers to the show says prepare very hardly for the divorce Absolutely, is what she said. Absolutely. It will be unpleasant. You will have to fight every inch of the way and it will uh, be hard work. Um, yes. And you cannot sort of do it amicably. You cannot have any verbal agreements because that will hold for about five minutes. You really have to get yourself a good lawyer be very clear about what you're doing, get yourself emotional support, and make sure you just stay the course. It will be worth it. Um, she uh, mentions uh, the same one that, that she's dealing with. Uh, Narc husband says, I have kids, and he uses that to trap me. And um, 
another another um, another individual, ladies, uh, gentlemen, feel free to put a name in there. It uh, it keeps me from having to stutter too much. Uh, if you put in even a fake name for me, that'll be great. Uh, it says my narc partner left no communication. He'll come back like it's nothing. How do I deal with this? So toxic. Well, the first thing is this person is not your partner anymore. <laughs> Good point. No, that's, that's, so, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes. Ideally, yeah. you need to get on with your own healing. This person has very kindly um, put, your, put you out of his misery. So instead of regretting it and making meanings about how awful it is, the idea is to accept what is and start healing yourself so you can have a good life elsewhere. Yeah, make room for what's coming yeah. because obviously they don't want to be there. Uh, that is going to prove to be more of a blessing for you probably in the long run than anything else. Yes. Uh, you say it so um, much more kindly than I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wanted you on the show because if I said, I sound, I've had others say, you sound like a dad. I say, because I am a dad. I'm just telling you right now, cut your losses <laughs> and keep walking. Um, but you say it, you say it for me. Thank you very much, Annie, for saying it the way you said. Uh, Dr. Annie, as of 2017, there's a new trend among 30s to 50s who are choosing uh, not to date, is what it says. Do you see the rest of that there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's not to date men anymore due to being constantly disappointed. Um, well, it's one way not to be disappointed. But if you want a life partner... Um, it might be an idea to accept that dating is tough and you want to have all the disappointments at the front end. So I think you have to be, we all have to be much more discerning about who we would actually go on a date with, who you would even consider spending time with. You're only looking for one decent partner. So if you want to find a partner, it's probably a good idea to do some looking. It kind of tells the universe that you're in the market. And that just seems to help. But accept that it's a difficult job. And I'm, don't I'm, I'm, invest in anyone too soon. Don't invest in anyone too soon. Yeah. And um, excuse me one second. <clears throat> I appreciate what you said. At the very beginning, you highlighted the fact that sometimes... Um, you are speaking to ladies that they need to spend some time alone. Mm. Uh, so many, when they do a, a little timeline of their life, they find out that they went from one relationship to another right after leaving their parents' home, mm. and they've never really traveled, experienced life alone to see mm. who they really are and what they're like. Um, I know everyone wants to give more to Annie in the way of questions to get advice, but you're going to have to come back. Because we have gone an hour and four minutes, and uh, we need to take a brief uh, break, and uh, we'll be right back. I just need to upload this, and then we'll come right back in about 10 minutes. So if you'd like to uh, reach out to Annie a little bit more, feel free to do so. Um, there's so much that's happening on the screen there, as you can see, Annie. Mm, yes. Um, feel free to address that when we come back. Um, life alone is so nice. Uh, in so many ways. That's not me saying that. That's from my friend, Maywish. Uh, yes. Annie, you've been on her show before. I have. Uh, Maywish yes. the Unstoppable uh, a number of times on her show. Uh, also, Anne Crosby says, I agree, Dr. Annie, over a year now and happy to stay that way. Mm -hmm. um, you're getting a lot of love. Maywish is saying, connect with Dr. Annie. She is incredible. Um, look at you getting love all on the screen. Listen, I, <laughs> you're just, you're just amazing, Annie. You're amazing. So uh, if you want some more of this, Annie's going to be back. Straight shooting will come from Annie. She doesn't beat around the bush. She, uh, she doesn't even shoot from the hip. She shoots from wherever she can, and you either going to take it or you're going to go find another channel to watch this. Uh, so um, uh, Bernice says she loves us both. Uh, thank you. Please like, share, comment, follow Annie. And uh, if, you, if you want more of Annie, Yes, her YouTube page, her Instagram, her website, 
if if you need any more, go to my friend Maywish's page, Instagram page, because Annie's got an interview over there. Look for Annie wherever you can find her, because um, uh, she's just uh, you're an amazing woman, and I, I love your wisdom and your insight and your discernment. Thank you. Um, right now, we're going to take a commercial break. Bye for now, but we will be right back in about 10 minutes. I'll see you in a, in a few minutes, Annie. Thanks. See you soon.